tune we've been working on belongs to a lady he uh he's been laid out of work for four years um he was in a pair and um he lost his partner so she's driving another pair now so he's got this one she's just asked me would i put it back in harness if i broke it you know, two of them i don't think breaking is the right word but trying them anyway for the job Oh my baby. And she was a bit concerned that she would be a good horsewoman. No, she wouldn't be a fool. Uh, she's a good horsewoman. She uh, concern was one is she, she hasn't got the time to do it. She's a, a very busy lady. So she said the other thing is she said I don't think you'll have the courage that it takes to go on his own because she always was a little bit behind the other horse looking for a cue from the other horse you know his mum anyway four years he's been out so we don't know what i'm trying to do now is i want to just let him go along with the slack of soppy rain um, so that's just to show anybody who's interested that he's got no yeah, I like that motor car coming there. I've got to you see the rain hanging down that washing line. Um, I understand the horse. I mean, obviously I do. Because I know him inside out. I've trained a good horse. Um, he's actually 14 2 and a fraction. 14 2 and a quarter of an inch, I would say. Um, so he's a you know, queer size, really. But he's a lovely, nice temperament, and he's come back and taken to his driving very well. There's been one or two silly things that we've had to iron out, and when I say silly, I cannot remember when he was here before. I mean, obviously, we go out of our way to find as much as we possibly can um, to show them, you know, like this thing coming up here. flashing lights on that. Come on baby, let me go. Come over. So I've got no real steering on him, but I'm just showing you that he'll go nice up here. He wants to stretch his neck out and have a stretch. i like that. But he'll go up here, no trouble at all. Does that means anything, you know. Nice horse, you know, nice spanner horse. The lady that owns him would be a horsewoman, I would say, in my opinion, and um, would have him and he'd know his place, um, and he'd be very happy in that place. So you can gather him up and keep him there, you know, sitting on the bit with his ears pricked, um, and he will uh, need, well, he won't need it, what he'd what he benefit from is lunch work. Steady baby boy, just walk. So I just want to walk him down here with this, you know, hopefully the traffic will get heavier as we go down the road. But he's a nice horse. One thing I would say, he's what we call three and I, he's up and down. So he never very seldom slides on his feet. So if you hear him when he goes, it's click, clock, click, clock, up and down, like that, you know, comes down dead flat. Consequence of that, he hardly wears his shoes. I mean, we've done a good few miles, we'll keep a record of the miles he's done. But um, another horse would be looking for new shoes now. And these are still good, you know. It's only where he, he lands flat on his shoe. But a nice temperament, nice, with other, other horses, he's good as gold. With, Obviously our job is to try, it's going to sound awful, but it's not meant in the way it sounds. We're looking for something that'll upset him so that we can put it right, don't we, obviously. So we want something that he's, you know, not very happy with so that we can put it right, yeah. Um, but it's only them cows and we've got him right up to the gate now where he'll, come on, walk up. 
you know, they're nose to nose almost. Um, well, they are nose to nose. Focus, come on, my baby. Come on, be good boy. Oh, you see that old sign they've just put over there. You'll have a look at the keeper's line. And what I'm trying to say to you, I'm not holding him on the lines, on the reins, to keep his line. You know, if you want to walk right over there, or jump to the right or left, come to that, he's got plenty of room to do it before I would regain control of him. Yeah? He's got so much slack in the reins. It's just showing you on this old roundabout here down by Tesco's. He's happy. It's funny, you know, you come down here. I've never really, I couldn't say to you, I'd love it, I wish I could. Thank you, old Tuesdays mornings are always busy down there. Thursday afternoons, anything. Can't say that in Andover because it's just not true. Because obviously we would come down here when it's the heaviest traffic you can find. So here we are this time of day coming up mid-afternoon, um, 3 o'clock time. Come over baby. And he's, uh, you see there's a child there calling out to him, yeah? And he doesn't mind at all, you know, he don't, uh, he don't make any exception about it. Come up a bit, baby. Just stand there, there's a good baby. Yes, you are, you young rascal. Poor little sugar plum. Come on in, mate. Walk on. Walk on. So this is nice now, because we're going to get caught at these lights again. We're going to start to change it now. And hopefully we get... But, you know, there's just no big stuff about. And just, just to the left of us here, the first turning off of this roundabout. Right there in the middle of town is a batching plant. I.e. where they mix up concrete. You know, so like from obviously when years ago, well baby, from years ago when it was being developed. Trot now babe, trot. Trot my baby boy, yes you are, you little rascal. Oh my baby. Stop in now. Oh, I want to know I couldn't do that if a kitty run out, dog, anything like that. He's good. Stand still now, baby. He's good as gold. Nice, nice horse. And he'd be one of them types of horses. Walk up, babe. Walk on. He'd be one of them types of horses that he would, if he took to you, which, yeah, he would do, you know, most people, as long as you're kind with him. Um, he's good on his discipline, so you wouldn't have, you know, if you tell him to get back in the stable, you want to muck him out, you want to do anything like that. He'll wait for his grub, you don't push him barge or anything, he's very good that way. So we just go around this little roundabout and back on the big one again. Come over, darling. Yes, you are, you little sugar. You know you're a good boy, didn't you? Come on in. You can hear his feet now, if you hear him. There's no slide on his feet. Just like a hammer at an anvil, you know, up and down, up and down. Come on, baby. There's my little sugar plum. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Oh, there's a big one. Look, have a look at that. Have a look at that. Have a good one. Oh, my baby boy. But he, if he took you, you'd have a friend for life in him. You know, he would bond with someone very strongly. Um, at this moment in time, we don't let the bond grow too strong. Please try and understand that. For the horse's sake, not for ours. But at the moment, he's like... Thinks the world of Reed, the other trainer. He sees Reed, you know, stand still now, that you um, He sees Reed not going to the feed, go on, let me go. Not going to the feed room or anything like that. Trot, baby. Um, 
but he just hear about it and he stops whatever he's doing and he's looking at him all the time, you know, he's got his head down. He's got, it really fascinates me why he's, I, I don't mind that he's not particularly interested in me, I don't want to get on it, right, you know, stand still, well, it's not that, um, you know, where he's feeding him and like that, because he fact knows where he's feeding if she goes to fever and like all other horses, go on, babe, where you go? Come on, let me go. Trot, babe. Turn on. Yes, good boy. Yes, you are. Yes, you are, you young rascal. Well, you've got all this traffic around him and he don't know what's coming. He's blind, isn't he? You put the blinkers on him like we do with driving horses. And uh, he don't know what's coming up beside him. He don't know where we're going to go. You know, because we can go like double all any of these roundabouts to take us home, or we can get home using any of these entrances off this roundabout. Just want to get caught by the lights. Everyone else wants to get home and we want to get caught. Because, you know, he's got to stand and do what we ask him to do. Oh, baby. Thanks, Phil. There's a good one. Thanks, Phil. Thanks, Phil. Thanks, Phil, buddy. Thanks, Phil. Thanks, Phil. Thanks, Phil. Come on in. Up you go. So we've come up to them lights there and went over as quickly as we wanted to, but you can see he's happy enough. And very, very, very good worker. But what do I mean by that? Endurance, definitely got it by the bucket load. And keep going. He's learned. Well, not learned, he had it before, but they don't always get it back as well as they got it the first time. Um, he's, he's learned to pace himself, yeah? So he'll get into his trot. And he'll go to, oh, I've been long, a long, long way. I mean, all horses that come here do 15 miles. There he goes. They do 15 miles. Any horse that comes here. There he goes. Yeah. What's going on, you go? Truck, baby. Truck. Yes, you are. You're good boy. When I asked him now, like if I asked him now, like, hands up! <laughs> I asked him to come back. There he is, my baby. And he's doing all that with a Wendler and rubber pit. And all that horses do, we're known to using rubber pits. It doesn't matter what you use when you take your own, but if you start with a rubber bit as soft as you can get a wender in, and the horse will behave himself on that bit, then what else is there to say? You can put what you like in, it doesn't matter thereafter, you know, whatever you're comfortable with, because you're never going to need, they say, and it does annoy me, they say, you know, pressure and release. Well, I'm sorry to say, and I'll defy anybody, it's pain and release. Why have all these cantilevers on the side of a bit? You know, cheap pieces of different descriptions. But fixing old terrains somewhere, you know. Whereas, what the, this is a loose ring snaffle. So all it is is a ring passing through the end of the bit Put it on the bridle, you know, on the put it on the bridle, strapping it onto the bridle and the reins on it. So the actual bit itself can revolve round and round. It's not influenced in any way by the reins. There is no cantilever. You've got nothing coming down the side like you have with a butterfly, a, um, a basket, a little pool, uh, whatever you want to mention with a cheek piece, you know, military reversible. There's all these bits they use. 
for less man's inability to do the job in a softer bit. If I can get this horse to go flat out and I can get him to come to a, to a stop, you know, like a, and then walk away quietly thereafter, that proves the point. And he's just like that, you could do that all day. So there we are, we've been down sunny Andover. We haven't seen much down there, so what I'm going to do is just come up through the trading estate. There's a lot of lorries will be coming in now this time of day, you know, from doing their deliveries, etc. And we might see a few there. And on the other day, it just could be a quiet day, you do get But he's a nice, nice boy, yeah, Chew, his name is. Funny old name for all, isn't it, Chew? I had uh, a fella bought me two horses to break years ago and I said to him, oh, I didn't look me, the other trainer said, you know, took his details what they are and he said, uh, this one's Keith and the other one's Brian. <laughs> you can expect that with you for horses, uh, Keith and Brian. So there you go, so what I'm going to do now, take this while I'm going down this trainer estate, there's a lovely little roundabout here that confuses horses. Um, they don't like it. They don't like the shape of it. You know, in fact, it's got a dome, slight dome in the middle, slight lift. And the fact it's made of cobblestones, they just don't like it. So if you're also go see, you can see it coming up now. Little tiny roundabout. Oh, the little corner is running roundabout, really. But we come down here like this. Oh, On we go, darling. And I wanted to go straight over the top of that one. See the other? In fact, you do that for me, you've asked. I don't shout, don't raise my voice, don't holler, don't smack him. People say you're a very crude driver, you're always stuck in your auction with the reins. Well, why I do that is these horses are in training. One day, you will catch them like that on the quarters, yeah, up there, like that, it'll happen. Sure it will. You know, you get startled, you all jump forward, all of a sudden he's got the rain slapped him up a rib cage, around his quarters and like that. People say to me, you don't you hit, you know, you hit them if you don't mind, you know, you give them a tap between the collar and the pad. Well, that's just totally annoys me. It does annoy me because it's nonsense. Well, in saying that, because they've got to be able to tolerate it anywhere. If you're going up the road and you catch your whip, you know, the lash on the end of your whip in the, in the uh, foliage on the side of the road, natural reaction is to pull it free, yeah? But when you pull it free, come up my baby. Oh my darling baby. Come round there, that's it. There we go. When you pull it free, because you're pulling it free and you're not really controlling the whip or where it is to land, it always anywhere. It could be up the neck, up the quarters, up his belly, anywhere, anywhere. And it just annoys me when people say, that, so, when you're training horses, it's all a little thing driving them in the show ring. But one certain thing, if they've been tapped all over, yeah, we don't carry whips, so I can't really show you. All we carry is a bumping stick, you know, our bumping sticks we have, which is just a bit of foam on the end. Um, oh, hang on, we've got one of those. I'm just being past this one. Come up there. Come up there, baby. So our bumping stick is just a ball, a foam ball. Can you see me squash it, look? And it's taped on the end. Yeah? It's just a foam ball. So I can do this. Stretch it right out there. Come over, babe. 
so please don't say to me these you know so-called experts that's what you do that's what you want to be able to do yeah get them around the towel look. can you see without them kicking back yeah I don't know, baby. Just, ready now. Just walk. Just walk. Just walk. And I'll put that down there between his legs. Can you see? Can you see me doing that? Come over. Come over. Come over. Ah, that's good. There's a good boy. I'm bringing him out of line. Bringing him out of line for the traffic, you know. So I just took him right across the road, the other side of the road. There. Steady, my baby. He thinks then what's going on? He's gone cracker as a driver. So if we put that there uh, down between his legs, can you see? Up his bum, everywhere like that. He ain't doing a thing, is he? Well, there's no one going to tell me, these great experts, that uh, that's what you do. What you need to do is that. When you can do all that, you can then learn, practice, take to use your whip. You know, between the collar and the pad. Of course, I'm all for that. But you know, when you're training all, you need to train that into them that they don't. So I'll just show you. Here. The trouble is, I went to avoid a couple of learners in motorbike. So if I put that down there, look, can you see between his back legs? Wobble it about. Can you see? Look. You see the ball moving about, moving his tail. Is he doing anything? Is he jumping, leaping, upset? No. If I'm, I don't mean this, please don't think I mean this in a big headed way, I don't. But it's a very important thing because if you don't do that, and he does have something touching now, I mean, let's just say, like I know, a lady, not so long ago, she, I said, yeah, I'll sort it out, it's no problem. Just bring him camp and she'd had the horse and took him across where she'd been going for years on the set side around the edge of the field but they hadn't cut it the fella that does the cutting had been on the field and it was a good three foot tall walk on babe walk on babe there you go walk there you go um good three foot tall so it come up all around his um, you know, his bits, his sheath and everything underneath and it didn't hurt him or sting him or any nonsense like that it just tickled him yeah, and made him jump and he kicked back when he kicked back and hit the car that, that's what frightened him and made him, you know, gallop off um Fortunately, he only went back down to the gate and that was it taken care of, really, you know. Come on, boat. Here's a big old lorry here, look. Come over there, pay attention to that. Showing you, you know, how, cool, how good it is in traffic. So we've not really seen any traffic today, but that's where it goes sometimes. Come on, my baby, try up. Yes, you are, you little sugar plum. Come over there, there's a good boy. And when I weave them across the road, look, like in front of this boat, while well, coming down here a bit like that, and then back over here, you know, if you lose control for a second, you, you know, I'm not saying that, but if it does happen, and you lose control for a second, you know, or you drop your rain, it happens, We'll talk about that on another video. There's another load of nonsense talked about that. The problem is, these people that um, are the so-called experts, they, and I please don't think, I've, I've got more work than I could possibly cope with. Yeah, it's that's a bit. Now, I literally, I don't know how long, but a long time in advance, people waiting for the horses to come in. So it's not that, it's just that people... Okay, so if you hit this horse, went over that foliage, and it was up around his crutch, he's not going to bother. He's not going to bother because he's had it all. He just see me with a ball, putting it right up between the cheeks of his bump, you know, and he's happy. 
exactly because listen, I've got to bring him over this lorry and this lorry's running and I'll bring him over there come over there like that come up folks have you got any apples? The <laughs> thing is running, oh yeah. Yeah, he's good as gold. That's what we want him to see. He's a, yeah, he's just a uh, nice one, isn't he? Go on, mate, on you go. There's a good boy. Thank you. The man's just saying the fridge is running on there. Is he all right? You see what I mean? A lovely, lovely fella. Thinking of me all sitting and like that. Well, he didn't have any notice of the fridge running, did he? You know, and he doesn't register with him because he's been trained properly that all the little bits and pieces are taken care of. You know, I mean, I'm sorry if I sound... It just... It just... Yeah, I suppose it's, it does annoy me because you see some lovely horses you know, that, what's it, that all for being trained properly and I'm not looking for work. Phone up any time. Any time you like. Phone up or send one of them, whatever they call them. Electronic mail thing. And you'll see we can't take any. You know, we're busy. But it's because they're... The horses are safe and happy. Safe confident and happy in any sphere of harness work and that's what we're going to do sorry if it sounds like a lecture a day it's just that I love my horses and I do I don't love them stuffing buckets of sweets down their mouth I don't do that but uh, he's starting up his lorry now go on and we'll go right go on get up man. get up behind it go on Go on, mate, get up, Arthur. Go on, my darling baby boy. You shoot sure off. Go on. Go on. Go on, get up. A lovely man, you know. No, 90%, I've got to say, of drivers we come across are. You know, very more reward and pleasant, very helpful and like that and good as goals, you know. It's like now when they say, please don't think I'm, you know, please don't think that because it's not meant in any nasty way, but they say, pass wide and slow, you know, leave two minutes. So what happens is, I get these vans, I see it all the time and hear it all the time from people. The downside of that is, they say, They say, come round on. Hello, Barry. Hello there, all right? Yeah, good, yeah. Go on. Come on, let me go. So, go on. Go on, my baby boy. And the downside of that is this past wide and slow, and our six foot, you know, go past slowly. You get a lot of these fans now, don't you? That deliver food to people's houses and save them going shopping. So you've got like certainly Tesco's, Sainsbury's, Waitrose um, and others. We've got a big arcade or whatever it's called. A big place here that, you know, ain't got any shops, have they? just deliver food. Um, whatever one that is. Well, when they pass wide and slow, they pull right over. But what they're doing now is brushing and knocking all the edges about. Hello, mate. All right. Now, a little bit. That's it. And when your horse is well behaved, you can afford to stop like that. Come on, my baby. What? Come round there, darling. And you can afford to go to the Parrot and Coffee Club, which is where we're going now. <laughs> Come round there, my baby boy. Come round there, my little darling baby. Yes, you are. Young rascal. I love this shop here, not because it does sausage rolls, 
but they look at themselves when they come, the horses, they can see their reflection. And some of them go, like, jumping about, you know, clapping their hands or their roofs, I should say. <laughs> Who are you? Let's go and play. Anyway, it's coffee time now. Thank you to everybody that's joined the Carrot and Coffee Club. Really do mean that. It enables us to make these films that hopefully you learn from. It seems to be the case that you do. You always saying what can we do well that's what you can do is join the carrot and coffee club um, some people send something every month just you know price for a cup of coffee really um, and some people make a donation whatever but it just gives us time to do this because I have to do all the filming in the evening as you know and edit all the films and in the cutting room do you know what I mean and I can't even turn the bloody thing on anyway that's it cup of coffee time. God bless, thank you. There's a smile on my face every time I hear that sound. The rhythm of the hoops as they touch the ground. And there's no better place I'd rather be than with my safety. Confident horse that's happy